Hey guys, so today's video is going to be showing you how to back up the files on your computer using a special utility completely free. There's no paid portion to using this service and it gives you a lot of control on how you can back up your files. So to get started, we're going to head over to a product page from a company called Veeam. Uh, ordinarily, they are in the enterprise sphere. so big businesses backing up lots of data, servers and workstations and stuff like that. But they have launched this tool called Veeam Agent for Microsoft Windows free. And uh, they're letting you use this tool with some of their advanced, uh, advanced enterprise features to back up your computer. So to get started, you can hit the download now button. That'll take you to a page where they would like you to make an account. Um, you can either do that with an email um, or they have third party sign ins like Google and Microsoft and Facebook. Um, I might suggest using one of those. But once you get through there, you will be able to get to the download, which will come into your downloads as a zip file. We're going to extract the zip file just to the same location. And then within there, there's just a simple uh, install utility. So we'll right click and run as administrator. And of course, with any piece of licensing, there's tons of agreements um, to look through and whatnot. I will leave it up to you to look through those if you would like to. Um, I'm just going to hit accept here and install. Okay, so Veeam has finished the installation and uh, it has this pop up here um, asking if you'd like to configure some storage things automatically. It's located my F drive, which is just a, an external hard drive I have plugged into my computer. Um, for now, I'm going to skip this and I'll explain why in a, in a second. Um, and then installation complete. Um, it wants to run this recovery media tool. Um, unless you are in planning on backing your entire computer up, including Windows, to make sure that you have a, a bootable copy of Windows to put onto another computer in a disaster situation, you can go through this here. I won't be doing this in this tutorial, um, but because we're going to be using a singular file backup, so just backing up the files, not caring about Windows, um, I myself would like to back up just the files because I'm okay with you know, reinstalling Windows uh, on the new computer or on the same computer once things are fixed, whatever the disaster situation is. Um, so we're going to uncheck that and just hit finish. And down here in your system tray, what you'll notice is you have this little icon uh, for the Veeam utility and it says that backup settings are not configured. So let's do that by double clicking. Uh, again, a warning here that says this installation operates in free mode. Would you like to install a license? Um, I would ensure that you click no to this because uh, if you do, it will constantly you know, pop this up um, because they are trying to upsell you to some of their more uh, enterprise level solutions. So we're just going to hit no. Um, there it says backup settings are not configured and recovery media has not been created. Again, like I said, you can come back and do this anytime. Um, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to be looking at uh, file backup, not uh, recovery media. So you can hit this menu here to add a new job. And that's going to bring up the job settings menu. We can give this job a name. So for simplicity, I'm just going to call this PC oops, backup and hit next. The backup mode um, will depict on, you know, what are you looking to back up? So entire computer, they recommend this. Again, this will include everything um, up into including the operating system. So Windows, your files, every little source file, uh, doesn't really matter. Um, volume backups. So within your hard drive that your OS is on, there's actually different volumes. Um, so you can select to have certain data's uh, data of that volume backed up. Um, that's an option as well. But the one we're going to be looking at here is file level backup. It says slower because technically it's going to look at every single file, back those up, um, and it won't be as quick as an overall backup um, as compared to some of these other options that maybe are more optimized. But uh, for this instance, we're literally just looking to back up the files on our computer. 
So we're going to hit that and hit next. And here's where you get to select what data you actually want to back up. Um, now you could go through your C drive, which I'm assuming is where the most of the data, but it could also be on a different hard drive here. And you could go through here into users and try and find all the data that you want to back up. Um, or they actually have this handy tool that says personal files. And if you click that, it actually highlights the location of all the personal files uh, in your directory and any other users that are logged into your computer. Um, this can be kind of handy because sometimes files are placed in different directories that uh, unbeknownst to you, you didn't know about. Um, so then it ensures that those are backed up as well. Uh, but for the purpose of this tutorial, just to, to show you guys what's going on here, I'm actually just going to be backing up one folder um, and it's going to be my pictures folder. All right, we're going to hit next. And then this is the list of options that you have as your destination. So where do you want these backup files to go and live once they're backed up? We have local storage, we have shared folder, Veeam backup repos repository. This is uh, an enterprise option. And as well, uh, unfortunately, Microsoft OneDrive is also a paid um, option. I wish they had little tags next to these to let you know which ones are and aren't. Um, but for this tutorial, um, we're going to be looking at the local storage option and equally the exact same steps can be performed for the shared folder option. So if you happen to have um, a NAS, a network attached storage like a Synology or a QNAP or one of those devices in your house that you have files on in the network, um, you can also choose this option to back them up there. So we're going to use the local storage option. Um, I have a two terabyte hard drive that's always connected to my computer. Um, it houses my music, uh, movies, library, and stuff like that. So I'm also going to use it as my backup location. And that's going to be this one here. I got 1.4 terabytes available on it, so lots of room to back up. Um, now, I'm going to pause here for a second, and what you may be thinking is what's the difference between you know me just manually copying files uh, from my computer to that hard drive periodically? You know why why should I go through the effort of installing and using a tool like this? Um, and the answer is is because some of the features that it has available to it, and as well the scheduling automation that we're going to get to in a second. So some of those features are um, the keeping different versionings of of backups. So you can keep well you could put this counter up as much as you want, you can keep a number of days of backups. Um, so what this means is you back up one day and then the next day the backup runs, you actually keep a differential between those two files. And if something happened on the third day and you need you know, the first day's backup, not the second day's for whatever reason, you can go back to those intervals and grab those backups. If you're just copying data to a hard drive periodically, one, you're not going to have that granularity, but two, you're also not going to have the avenue to go back in that versioning and grab those different files if something like corruption, you know, rears its ugly head. Um, so that is one of the great uh, advantages that you have using a program like this. I personally am probably going to set this down around three um, because the higher you do set this number, the more uh, space your backup will take regardless of how much actual storage you know if my picture I think my pictures file is about 800 megabytes but if you set this to uh, a very high number that 800 megabytes can easily turn into a couple gigs after you know a week of backups because it is keeping more of it rather than getting rid of the old. Um, also in the advanced we have the ability to create uh, periodic full backups. So what this program is going to do is on the very first time it backs up, it is going to back up everything in whole, you know, as it stands on your computer onto the, the external hard drive. But then on the next day's backup, it's only going to back up the changes that have been made to any files. So if a file hadn't been opened or changed in any way, it won't get backed up. Um, this is for a couple reasons. One, there's no reason to. Um, unless changes had been made. Um, and two, um, it saves space and time on the backup so that it doesn't you know, keep backing up the same file over again when there is no change. Um, but 
What we will want to do is I personally set this checkbox to be on and I choose it monthly, you know, the first Monday of a month so that we actually do a full backup of all of our data, you know, monthly just to ensure that nothing's getting missed. You know, if it doesn't tag a file as being changed, but it has been changed, this will ensure that you are catching the most recent version of that file and, and possibly avoiding some corruption in there. And we'll hit next. And this again is another one of those powerful features that this product has over simply just manually dumping your, uh, your data onto an external hard drive is you can set when and how this happens. So we can have this happen daily, starting a little bit after midnight, um, every single day, or we could choose on weekdays um, or on these days, and you can actually select which days of the week. So if you wanted Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or something like that, you could select exactly when you want those to back up. Um, if the computer happened to be powered off at this time, you know, you forgot the backup was going to be run and you powered off your computer, you can actually decide what will happen um, once the computer is back on, you know, go ahead and do the backup or just skip that backup. You know, it's fine. It, it can wait till the next interval. Um, and the other one that I really like, especially if you're going to be running this backup, um, you know, in the midnight hours, is once the backup is taken, what should the computer do? Um, it's nice that they give you the option that you could actually hibernate the computer or even shut down the computer so that, you know, you leave your computer on so that the backup can run, but then it's not running all night once it finishes. You can save some of that uh, electricity cost by having it hibernate or even shut down. Um, and you can even do some advanced things like, say, every time I lock my computer, which means, you know, you've locked your computer and you're probably walking away, go ahead and run a backup. Um, that would be if you want to be even more um, tight on your backup window rather than waiting an entire day for a backup. Um, that might be for somebody who uh, works a lot on their files and makes a lot of changes every single day. Um, same with if you log off your computer, go ahead and run a backup. So all of these are some advanced options that you don't get with um, the manual effort and even other softwares out there that are for backing up. So this is the end of the settings. We can go ahead and hit apply and it's just going to summarize everything here, everything that we've done. Um, and if all this looks good to you, we can also check off the box here that says run the job when I click finish. So that will actually run the first job and then the next job will run um, at your desired window that you've set in your schedule. So we'll go ahead and hit finish here. And you can see here the Veeam agent is starting the backup process and it's just going to take a little bit to complete. Um, so I'll fast forward the video to when this is done. Okay, and so the backup is done. Um, you can see the elapsed time for 835 megabytes was about a minute and a half, uh, so not too long. And uh, this is just some of the, the steps it took to create that backup. And what you'll see here is for each day that a backup is taken, you will have one of these pillars that will uh, be recorded here and show you what was and wasn't backed up. Um, green pillar means everything was good. Yellow pillar means it probably worked, but there were some errors or something it didn't like. And a red pillar is a missed backup or a total error on the backup, um, just so you know in the future. And um, if we head over to uh, my F drive, the two terabyte hard drive that is the target, what you'll see here now is a folder called Veeam Backup. If we head in there, there is the name of the backup that I set earlier. And then within that, these are these package files uh, that I mentioned earlier. Um, so you're not going to be able to click into these and see the files because they're all packaged up. You're actually going to use the software to take a look at the files that are within here. And this is again so that they can, you know, keep the file size and everything in a controlled variable state. Um, for their software. So let's take a look at what that looks like. If we click on the pillar here, we come back to this window and there's the option for restore files. If you click on that, it will take a second, but it's basically importing one of those backup packages into the agent. 
and then it brings up sort of its own file explorer window to take a look at the files. So if we drop down this here, it starts with users, my users, and then the picture folder is the actual one that I saved. Um, not really a whole lot in here other than maybe some stuff in my iCloud, uh, but let's say for instance, this, whatever this desktop utility file is, was something that we wanted to restore. Um, so we have a couple options. We could copy to, um, so we could restore the files to a selected location. So this would be if we wanted to restore them to um, a location other than the original location where they sat on your actual hard drive. Um, this might be in the case where that hard drive has gone kaput, you know, and it's done, so you actually can't save to it anymore. Um, or the more traditional option is if you accidentally deleted a file or a folder got deleted, whatever the case may be, you can restore that. Um, you can either overwrite, so maybe this is a versioning issue or a corruption issue, or you can keep, which you'll keep both, both versions of the file. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you guys found this tool um, useful to you and automating your backups overnight. Um, let me know down in the comments below if there's any other tutorials that you're looking to see. And as always, please like and subscribe.